Thank you. Have your attention, please. The Lynn Zoning Board of Appeals, Tuesday, April the 3rd, 2018, will now come to order. Roll call. Mr. Wood. Here. Mr. Dishonor. Present. Mr. Cole. Present. Mr. Curry. Present. Mr. Cameron. Present. We have a quorum. Motion to accept minutes from the last regular meeting on March 20th, 2018. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The, the ayes have it. First case this evening will be case 9819 23 Gordon Road. Uh, Mr. Cole, can you read the ad? Uh, sure. Petitioner Susan Freehan, case number 9819. Uh, 23 Gordon Road to allow demolition of an existing single family residence on an undersized lot, 9,553 square feet in zoning district R1 in construction of a, 20, a 2,200 single family residence in its place. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Public hearing is now open for those in favor. Please, Mr. Mitchell. My name is Matt Langes yeah. from Phoenix Architects. Okay, thank you. You have the floor. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I've been working with Susan for the past six months now to um, tear down this existing house and propose a uh, four bedroom, two and a half bath uh, existing or, uh, construction here. So uh, what Susan and I have been working with uh, the past couple of months is to uh, first, actually, do an addition. Uh, by the time we realized all the plumbing and electrical, asbestos floor, everything that needed to be ripped out, uh, ended up being more cost effective to, to build a new house. So, uh, what we're proposing to do here is have a two car under garage here on, underneath the entire first floor. The rest of the basement will be utility and storage. And as you work your way up to the first floor, um, entering off of Gordon's, so this is Gordon Road that comes up and wraps around. Yeah, excuse me a minute. Yes, I forgot to ask you your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Your um, occupation for the record. Matthew Langis, uh, 38 Madison Street, Amesbury, Massachusetts, and I'm an architect. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you bring that up a little closer? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, I want him. To, I want them to be able to see you too down the line. Right in the middle, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what we've been working with is uh, opening up this foyer, having a U-style staircase here that sees through to a large living room. Uh, the living room has a gas fireplace, opens up to a, an eat-in kitchen, uh, a built-in table off of that, and then down the hallway is, is the entire master suite with a uh, guest bedroom. So the upstairs is considerably smaller to cut down on the amount of square footage that we're adding. But upstairs uh, is shared by a couple bedrooms, a bathroom space, and an office loft space with a couple of walk-in closets as well. So from the exterior, we're looking to do somewhat of a modern colonial, have a, a couple gable roofs here to, to accentuate the front of the, the house as well, um, add a couple columns to bring more of a traditional element with a side light door, box out these windows on the side here with a couple of roofs over it to give it a little bit of dimension, and then from the side, what we're looking to do is have this main piece be the two-story piece in the kitchen and the dining room to um, allow it to be one story only so we can capture some of that volume ceiling space. So total from the mean grade, we're about 32 feet to the, to the mean part of the highest ridge. And that's with the worst grade possible. So uh, we're calculating it being closer to 26 and a half feet from the average grade of the street to the mean grade of the roof. That's good. Right. Trying anyone to keep have, the roof magnitude down by. Anyone have any questions for the architect for the petitioner? No, just one. So the the, the did you didn't does that show that doesn't show the front steps, right? So I believe, and I'm, I'm, Ralph isn't here tonight, but I believe what Ralph was assuming is that this front step was uncovered. So that I know is allowed to go into the setback, but we'll have an updated set. All right, no, so. I just was curious. Yeah. All right. Where did you say the cars were going to be? So the cars are, if you're, probably be better to look at the platform. So this is existing, this is where we're existing right. now. And the way that the house is, you yeah, go around the back, the whole way. The front of the house is actually this side here, the existing house. 
So the garage, the existing driveway is on this side. So we're going to reuse that existing driveway and drive underneath the house. Right. 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 I heard you say underneath the house, and that's what I didn't understand. Oh, okay. I saw yeah. the parking spot. There's a pretty there. steep. There's a pretty steep driveway yeah. to Golden Road. Yeah, yeah. So two car garage. Two car garage. Two car garage. Two car garage. Yeah. Okay. That's a beautiful design. Yeah, that's Thank a you. nice design. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Do you have landscaping? Uh, no, I You don't have a landscape plan? No, I don't. Yeah. I have a landscape plan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Could you, if we made that a stipulation, could sure. you? Sure. Could you include that? We can that? absolutely provide it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else in favor of this petition? Anyone else in favor of this petition? Here are none of those in favor 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 Oh, I'm in favor yeah. of it. <laughs> okay, state your name address. Susan Bergen. Okay, thank you. Uh, those, uh, closing in, those in favor, of those opposed. Anyone here opposed to this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? No, 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 no. Closing in, those opposed. What is the wish of the board? Motion to grant. Motion by Mr. Colgan and then second by Mr. Scurley. Please call the roll. Persuading, providing, we're going to get a landscaping. Yeah, landscaping, that's a stipulation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Wood? Yes, Mr. Grant. Mr. Gisona? Yes, Mr. Grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Curley? Yes. Mr. Kellman? Yes, Mr. Grant. The petition has been granted unanimously. Thank Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next case is Holland Street, Parcel, number 096, by the way, you know, uh, please read the list of all the Petitioner Thomas McGovern, ZBA 9820, owner under agreement to allow construction of a single family residence upon an undersized lot, 5,681 square feet, with less than the required frontage, 29.71 in zoning district BD. Public here is now on for those in favor. I'm attorney, uh, Sam Vitale. I represent Mr. McGovern, who's here, who's the petitioner. Um, and uh, because of the weather and the city council's uh, other business, uh, I'm sort of out of sequence. The reason uh, we need approvals is twofold. First, because this is, a, believe it or not, is a business district, we need city council consent. That was scheduled originally in February, then there was a snowstorm that was scheduled for March 13th, there was a snowstorm. So that meeting is next Tuesday, on April the 10th, as to the use. Um, Tom has met with the Ward Council, who's Mr. Starbird, uh, at the site, um, and we will be in front of the City Council to get their permission as to use. But even if they were to grant the use, we still need the Board of Appeals because only you can vary the application of uh, the dimensional regulations. And with respect to this, I think I submitted when I filed the um, application that for many years there was a single family house on this lot. And uh, the Diulius family, who runs a business uh, on Collins Street, acquired the law and at some point took down that house. And they are the people who own the law, but they have signed an agreement to sell it uh, to Mr. McGovern to construct a single family home, uh, which would be a permitted use in that district with city council consent because it's a business district. And so uh, he met with Councilor Starr, but he showed Councilor Starr the plan um, I understood that the lot would be staked. He tells me he didn't see the stakes. He called um, Denny from um, Landmark, Denny McManus, who apparently is hospitalized. And he's in the hospital. And, uh, but if you've been there, you know where Jewish Court is. And the uh, entry the way to the parking spaces would be along Jewish Court uh, and at the rear of the proposed home. There was an existing foundation still there that would have to be removed from when they tore down the old house. Uh, and the single family home that he uh, proposes uh, is shown on this set of plans uh, that we brought for you to uh, take a look at. 
uh, with respect to the construction of, of, of the dwelling. Uh, and we think uh, the design is compatible with the other homes in the area. Uh, and uh, I know that, uh, as I say, Tom met with the city councilor. Uh, and we expect to have, obviously, his support and the support of the city council as to, to the use. And uh, we're here uh, with respect to our application because notwithstanding that the fact that there was a single family home on it, uh, it was taken down so long ago that the zone ordinance says that if you have a use that's there and it's discontinued, and discontinued generally means it's not there for like more than two years, then it reverts to the, the as far as what can be done at that corner or that lot, it reverts to the uses that are allowed in the district. So the real choice is a business, which the neighbors would prefer to have a single family dwelling. Uh, and so we need to get relief for use, but the lot's undersized. If that house could have stayed there as long as it was there on an undersized lot. But once we, uh, they took down, the Ulysses took down the, the home, then it became, and the only dimensional regulations in a, uh, in a business district, uh, you don't build more than five stories and that you can build right to the uh, property lines and that you have 50 feet of frontage. Uh, obviously, the differences for single family use are shown on the plan that Landmark did do in terms of conformance with setback, side yard, rear yard, parking, all of those. We can't change the size of the lot. That's the way it's always been. And so the relief we're seeking is obviously for the area of the lot. Uh, we would think that the fact that there was a single family dwelling and the single family dwelling is the least intensive use because if it doesn't have residential use, then somebody can put a business in there and uh, that business in terms of dimensions can go right to the property line uh, or, or may not be as, as favorable as well accepted as we think uh, the proposed dwelling is. And uh, Tom brought the set of drawings uh, that were prepared uh, by the architect with respect to the proposed home. Uh, who, who is the architect? Uh, Deer Hill. John Kroll. Oh. Deer Hill. Yeah. 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 That's nice. Same architect as the Bertrand, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looks like a good fit for the area. So this would be the, 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 the proposed home. Uh, and as I say, it satisfies all the other dimensional regulations, satisfies the parking, showed on Denny's plan, uh, landscaping, and uh, I would hope that the board would look favorably on our request. Sure. John Cole, John Cole. So, uh, Tom, one question. It says yeah. you've taken out the foundation. You're also going to take out the 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 current the old current driveway that's there. The what? The the old the tar. The, oh, sure. You're going to yeah. take all that out. Yep. <clears throat> it's all part of the hard and soft landscaping. Yep. And uh, and that shows on the plan that someone else has. We we show the parking lot. <clears throat> I think this is the larger version of what Mr. Cole's looking at. And I think what he's asking about is the, the two minutes driveway to be removed. Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. the so concrete I, I walk yeah. to yeah. be removed. Yeah, right. And then the parking would be at the rear. Yeah. Clean up the area. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then my other comment would be that um, that you repave that and take out the clear cut. Sure. So that, again, because that's not a legal space and just want to give anybody the opinion that they should be parking there because that you're showing it as um, grass yep. on this plan. So that would be a request that you uh, yeah. just, just, oh, you'll have to make a notation of that. Uh, your architect, yeah. okay, if it's approved, yeah. okay. Anyone else have any? Well, where's, where's the landscaping? Excuse me, the landscaping. You have she can read it on that. Yeah, it's just it's showing shrubs, still and grass. Throughout. What about the trees that's there? Shrubs in front. Any trees that I can leave, I leave. Well, there's only that one tree. Yep. And I looked at it and I looked at this and I thought, gee, that should be able to stay there. I don't see it this way. I you know me. I leave every tree I can. 
There's no need to remove it because well, the parking lot is. It doesn't look like it. It looks and like it would be right over here. It doesn't need to be removed. It's not in the way of the foundation. Absolutely. I, I always right. leave them. So it's just a matter of. Yeah. Yeah. What we did is we that's added. We're showing what we're adding. Not, well, that's all the only thing we're eliminating here. is that concrete uh, foundation in the, the bituminous drive. Do you have any tanks in there? Any, any fuel tanks in there? Oil I'm tanks? Aware of it. <laughs> it was a house. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I'm saying it could have an oil tank in there, so. Yeah. Well, if it is, you'll have to get it out. When they demolish, yeah. my memory is when I saw the demolition permit, they got, you have to get signed up by the fire department, yes. uh, the building department, right. the health department. And right. the house was removed, I think, like in 79. The fire department 80. has to sign off on yeah. those LSDs. Those were there. Yeah. yeah. So maybe back then they were, they were, that was part of the stipulation that you just couldn't bury the tanks, and maybe they, they took Hopefully well, the fire department is pretty good with it, but one of the better record-keeping yeah. agencies in the city yeah. is the fire department. Yeah. Okay, you have any more questions, Mr. Spring? Three bedroom? Yes, one half bedroom. Yeah. Mr. Gisano, I have a second of that. Second, Mr. Wood. Second. Okay. Okay. Mr. Wood? Yes, Mr. Wood? Yes, Mr. Wood. Mr. Wood? Yes, Mr. Wood. 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 Yes, Mr. Wood.
and what the current ordinance now requires. And, and the first is that in the zone ordinance, there is a requirement for distance between curb cuts. And if you've been to the site, you know it's on Park Street on the corner of Park and Western. Park's one way, and then it goes down and proceeds down 107 down Western. The curb cuts have been there since the station's been there. Curb cut on 107 is on the state highway. But those curb cuts have two problems. One is the distance one to the other, uh, and the zone ordinance says there's gotta be a minimum of 50 feet between them. And the one on Park Street and the one at the corner of uh, Western and Park is closer than 50 feet. The second is that the zone ordinance says that the width of the curb cut, the maximum allowed is 28. And I think the plan that we have shows 30. So we don't conform to that. Uh, and then, and this is the one uh, with respect to the drive-through. If you read the definition, uh, which I don't think applies because I, I went to Wikipedia and I looked up what a restaurant is. Uh, and it says in the zone ordinance that if you have a, a drive-through, you have to have four spaces and they have to meet the design specification of the nine by 18 uh, from the call box to the window. And you have to have uh, eight spaces from the wind, uh, from the auto window to the, uh, with the line cues. And that presented a problem for us because um, we have the requisite packing based on the size of what's proposed for the building. This is what the building's gonna look like. The building's gonna be a new building. It's going to look like this. And like most of these places, it has a mini mall. But it also has the, the drive-through facility. So, so this is, this is what uh, is going to be constructed in terms of the gas station and the mini -mart. But when we cite that on the lot, um, given the uh, shape of the lot and given its position uh, on a one-way street and on a Route 107, uh, <clears throat> and we configure the, the drive-through lane, we had two problems that I described to you. One is that if we go back four plus eight, we wind up here, all right? And that concern that they had was that it would interfere with these two spaces. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll make these two spaces be employee spaces, number one. And number two, we have more than the required spaces even without those two spaces. But they then, uh, so I think we were there February 27th, and Mr. Uh, Clint Mookie wrote a letter on the 28th saying, well, these are the things you can do. You could uh, reduce the size of the station, and we don't want to reduce the size of the building. Um, you could change the configuration, or you could seek a variance. So we came to seek a variance. So if you look at this plan, which shows that is, is the blow up of the plan we provided to you, uh, first we're talking the distance between here and here and here and here. And they say it has to be a minimum of 50, and it's not here. The second is they're saying that the width, okay, should be uh, 28, and we're, we, we were beyond that. And that. But that's what's there. The, the entrance and the exits and the, the drive, the curb cuts, they're there. And, and the width is there. So that, that's unchanged. It just doesn't conform to what the current requirement is. And then with respect to the uh, drive-through, it does meet the width standards, it does meet the, uh, the number of spaces, uh, but it has an impact on these. So what we're proposing is that even though we don't think we're a restaurant, and even though we don't think the eight plus four applies, we can live with the four, and we just want to have it be six because if we did that, then it, there's no possibility of these spaces being interfered with. And then the second thing is this, there's no way we can make a, uh, a bypass lane the width of the drive-through lane. Not on this one, it's, 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 it's impossible because of the shape. Yeah, Thanks. so so if we did that, if we did, if we did, was, uh, if you did or allowed us to do what we suggested, what would happen is if you were, let's say, you, for whatever reason, you got in and you changed your mind. 
Well, you can get out. The question is whether you're going to be four cars back or two cars back. And so if we keep the bypass lane where it is, um, but we reduce what's required from eight to six, then you're more readily to pull out a line and get into the bypass. That's a good thing. And the second thing is it can't interfere with these two spaces that we want to make employee uh, parking. And then with respect to it, as I said, we went through two site plan reviews. The flow of the traffic would be come in this way, you go out that way. Um, the required number of spaces include the uh, eight spaces that are at the pumps. Most gas stations now are self-service. Um, and so there's eight at the pumps. I think there's 12 others, including those two. So we have 20, which is in excess of the number that's required. Yeah, do you have any handicap parking? Handicap. I think it's over closest to the building is right here. Yeah. Right there. We have a van space right here. You have one space. You have one space. One space, yeah. One space. All right, thank you. Is this your parking for your store? Excuse me? Yeah, that's parking. Well, it's parking for the store along the side, uh, underneath, you know. Oh, and, uh, is this parking as well, right here? Yeah, right? Uh, where, where the tanks are. Yeah. Yes. Right, right no, not, not, not the right here. So yeah. yeah, that's partially covering the tanks. That's just a concrete yeah, slab. Is there parking there? Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. yes. I'm uh, for, for the record. record. Uh, for the record. No, in fact, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Richard Griffin from Derby Square Architects at 10 Derby Square in Salem, Massachusetts. Thank you. So the other two. The just other so, can I just finish your sign quick? Yeah. I just, so I, these are parking spaces up against the store, correct? Correct. And those are parking spaces as well? That's correct. But to get to them, you, you've got to go all the way around the building? You, no, no, you, no, can drive. you, can no, you can't. It's one way in and one way out. Yes, but you could, you could come in. If there, these weren't full, you could get across this way into the parking spaces. What if they are full? If they are full, you do have to go around the building. Yeah. So another, another People who go to them. these mini marts are buying lottery tickets, cigarettes. Oh, I know. Yeah. Believe me, I, I know. Where, so you only have two employee parking spaces? That's correct. Right. And you're going to have a Dunkin' Donuts in there, a mini mart, and the gas, the, the gas station tenants, right? right? The, the Dunkin' Donuts is just a drive through Correct. Oh, there's not a lock-up counter for Dunkin' Donuts inside? No. There's a lock-up counter. Well, the, the there is a walk up. Excuse me. Uh, I one of the Could you come up and give your name and address? For the record. Yeah, Officer Rumpus, owner of EV Inc. 625 Western Avenue. Did you get that? So you're going to have a walk-up counter inside yes. the store for yes. dunks, which yes. like they use in other stores, yeah. right? right? And you'll have right. another right. counter, which is gas, right. and for right. the convenience yes. store items yes. and stuff yes. like that, yeah. correct? Yes. Right. So this, this parcel is unique in another way. <clears throat> this half of the street is in Ward 5, and this half of the street is in Ward 6. So when we met with uh, Councilor Capano, um, his concerns were <coughs> the uh, residences he along here. Uh, so I met with the owners of these properties, uh, and they asked that we would put an eight-foot fence, so the plan shows uh, an eight-foot fence between the, uh, I think it's an apartment house here and one here. The gentleman who has the three families that uh, are along here uh, is unable to be here tonight, but he, he did give us a letter saying that he's been a neighbor of uh, the gas station for years. He has no objection with respect to the construction of the station. He owns the properties that are here. I then met with, uh, now that was before we did site plan meeting one. Between site plan meeting one and site plan meeting two, uh, Council Jacutis was away at the time. We met with Council Jacutis, and, and her she really didn't have any concerns because the people that are in the residences that she has are down in this area. And so uh, both of them, uh, and we uh, informed the site plan review people, uh, the only thing that came from that was the request for an eight foot fence along here, so we changed it to an eight foot high. Oh, instead of a six to be Instead of a six to be an eight. Yeah. Okay. And we assured those people that we would accept that as a condition. Yeah. And it would be kept in good repair. Yeah. yeah. Is, that a, is that a fence right there? Here? Yeah. There's a fence here. 
And then this, this is the one they want to be eight feet high. The residences are here. The apartment houses are here. Yeah. How many square feet is the building? 3,600. Square footage is 3,600. 3,600? And you only have two parking spaces for the, for the building? No. There are 20 total spaces. Only two oh, yes, yeah, spaces. Employee, but you get 20 something, so you get. Yeah. yeah. Where are the 20? So you got a handful yeah. here. There's 8 plus 12. Oh, you count those as, I see, yeah. Oh, I see the other ones right over there, but on top of the pad. Yeah. It's like a real requirement that we need. Yeah, there's a right here on the floor. The employees that you, the question that you ask, the green employee park, we identify those so customers will not use them because employees are going to stay there. That's why you identify those as employees only. But employees can park in the other spots too. Right, yes. But the total that we need is like 11, but we have 20. That's total parking spots. It's a good fit. Okay. Anyone else here? Anyone give any questions for the first? So the city council did attach a condition that said maintain and landscape with tree and shrubs and flowering yeah. plantings in the island areas. Which they show on that plan. Yeah, we have shrubs here. Yeah. 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 Then we've got grass here. Yeah. Snow what kind of plants would you put? Uh, nice plants. We can get the uh, Yeah, what kind of plants did you have in the I'm figuring on the perennials. Geranium yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hibiscus, um, azaleas, rhododendrons, that sort of thing. Okay, put on that one. Make this oh, yeah. Okay. Thank and then some flowering shrubs oh, no. on the side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. And what about snow? Yeah, right here. This is going to be slowly move right here. Snow, 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 snow storage. Snow storage, yeah, right here. Yeah. Maybe and then too if, much. You have, if you have okay. that, if you get too much, you got to remove it. Remove it, yes. Yeah. yeah. We we'll do that with all our stations. If it's too much, we have to remove it. Yeah, right. Okay, anyone else have any questions? So, so is the Duncans, and what is there another brand name going in there, or is it just a, you know, like Cumberland Farms? Or no, no, it's, it's just they're going to be your it's own. Our own brand. Okay. Yeah. But Dunkin' Donuts yeah. is, is. A definite. Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. <clears throat> all right. Okay. You know, in the packet that we get that you supply us, this to me is a disgrace. To send something this tiny with all that's on here, and I'm supposed to be able to decide. We, we submitted a plan that's this size. I don't know how they can transmit it to you. But well, we all have to have one. You're supposed to give all of us something like you have. I don't want to come here tonight and all the minutes. The, the, the quarrel is not with us. We, we follow religiously what the application says we need to submit. When we wrote a site plan review, the, applica the application says you have to have 10 full sets of plans. They don't, ex they don't have us bring 10 full sets of plans. They have us bring a flash drive and one set of plans. So we, we had this size is what we submitted. We submitted those because it also says you have to have six or whatever. But, uh, Next time, something like this comes before me, something big like this, I couldn't even go down to, to get in to walk around to see, to measure, because it's got a chain link fence all around. Well, we did that because we didn't anticipate. I don't know if I understand that. Yeah. Understand? But I don't understand how, how you feel. I should be able to know what I'm doing. I'm all a magnifying glass. And I knew yeah. when I came here, you would have a big one. But I don't want to sit here for 15 minutes and have to look at all this and understand what you're talking about. I and promise I you, next time we need to come in front of you, we'll make sure that you get the big well, the next time anybody right. comes here with a piece like this, I'm yeah. not going to go for it. Well, we're going to have to put, it, put that on the application. You ought to, yeah, I was going to say, if you read the application, we, we will do. it says have six plans, eight and a half by 11. So I'm not going to do it. Oh, no, so, I'm not being fresh. No, I'm not. And I'm not being fresh. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just saying. I mean, but, and, so we, we, we generally go beyond, okay? So I'm saying to you that we, we did file one of these. Okay. But how they can transmit this to you other than by the mail, I don't know. Okay. And then the other way, which the site plan review people have adjusted, even though their requirements is 10 full sets of plans, because they have seven members, okay, we bring them a flat, they now accept, okay, a flash drive, a PDF, which they can then email. And, but, but people show up at the site plan review meeting, and it's very similar to this. They got a plan like that, somebody emailed them. We bring the boards and we show them, and then they make, 
and, and part of it, you've got to understand it in terms of not everybody's got to own a gas station or is a large developer or whatever. Cyclone review applies to everybody, not just it's anything one or two family or beyond, those are exempt, but everybody else that meets those requirements for a project. But some people, to bring him here, he's not showing up as a volunteer, and every time you change the plans, so they understood that, and what they decided, and what we took advantage of is, and they did it because, partly because, because I objected, saying, you're making this an imposition on some little guy that's trying to do something, so they, they have a process that's called a pre-application conference. We've been to two pre-application conferences so we can shake out all of the issues and then get th what they want because we can't get a building permit until they get what they want. And so as this evolved and we went through the most recent one, that's when a lot of these issues had been resolved prior to that and we came down to what's left uh, and we were guided by uh, Clint's letter of uh, February the 28th in which he said these are the issues that need to be addressed and you either address them that way or you address them um, by means of getting a variance. And so we felt that uh, given this configuration that what we proposed was reasonable because there's no other way. It's understandable here. This I can understand. Yeah. This, I look at this and I can This, this is Mr. Mucci. We were there in cycling review on February 27th. Sent this letter February 28th, in which he, I sort of summarize in these three points what he's talking about. And he says it's 12 plus 8. I mean, I'd be glad to give you his letter. But at the end of the day, I can't make the curb cuts closer to 50 feet. Okay, I can't do it. And then. Uh, me, I'm a layman. I thought it would be better to have 30 than 28. But they said, no, you can only have 28. And so when they looked at the plan, they go, well, that shows 30. I go, that's what it is. He went down that day and actually walked it and measured it and said, yeah, it's 30. So our alternative is, how do we make it smaller? To what's your question about the size of the plan? Most towns that we go to, it we doesn't fly. matter. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Yeah, it's we require it. Okay, I appreciate the advice, but uh, we have our own. Right. Uh, so that's an 18 by 30. That's a, that's a 24 by 24 36. 24 by 36. That's yeah, that's the biggest thing. They usually bring in. Yeah. That would be big. Well, I mean, this is just a lot. No, I know. It's I mean, yeah, too small. Yeah. And then these were the stipulations so that the, the city council put on. Okay. Uh, anyone else here in favor of this? You all said this time like that. Yeah, unless there are other questions. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyone else here in favor of this petition? Why don't we put this? Anyone else here in favor of this petition? Here, man, I'm closing here. I'm closing favor. No, but I was opposed. Anyone here opposed to this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? Here, man, I'm closing here. I'm closing opposed. What is the wish of the board? The motion to grant. All motion made by Mrs. Kelly to grant the petition. Second. Second by Mr. Cole. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood. Yes to grant. Mr. Jusano. Yes to grant. Mrs. Cole. Yes. Mrs. Curley. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. The petition has been granted by unanimous decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next next case is yeah. next case is nine eight one eight one zero five Wall Street. Mr. Tolkien. Yeah, addition on Jose Amaya. How's that? Joshua. Josh, it's like Joshua. Joshua. Case nine eight one eight. Attorney Samuel Vitali to allow auto repair auto body shop use on a parcel in zoning district. Central Business District, where such non-conforming use previously existed but was discontinued. I'm Attorney Vitale. Take it away. This is Joseph Meyer. This is Hector who will transfer. Josh took possession of the property. Many people know it as Bill Walsh's 
It's a building on the corner right. of Willow and Liberty in disrepair for a lot of years. <clears throat> Has an interesting uh, history. Um, it's been a gas station since uh, April of 1927, and it got to be a gas station by, to give you an idea where it was, Board of Appeals case number 117. Oh, yeah, it was approved by the Board of Appeals in uh, 1927 uh, as a gas station. I remember sort of as a Bursar station. I don't know, maybe you remember it, but it was a Bursar gas station um, for many years. Uh, then Bill Walsh came in in about the, I'd say the early 70s. He operated it as auto repair. And he, and he did operate it for many, many years. Pat Tedisco, who you've met, because I've represented him before, bought the property, uh, fixed up the property, cleaned up the lot, and these fellows want to lease it on their own. They went to City Hall. When they went to City Hall, uh, they were overwhelmed in terms of what they needed to do. But we sort of sorted through that. <clears throat> the people in ISD, the building department, were very helpful. People in the clerk's office, as Mary knows, were very helpful, Gene and the others. <clears throat> and we sort of figured out what was there. Walsh had a business certificate, and he had a, an auto repair license. So he had it, okay? But you can't transfer an auto repair license. If you're going to be in the auto repair business, you <clears throat> have to go in and file. So he went in to file to get the auto repair. <clears throat> and the first question was, did he need to go to the city council? Because, as Mr. Cole read, <clears throat> it's in the central business district. When you look at the table of uses in the central business district, auto repair, <clears throat> auto sales, uh, auto body are not permitted uses. Okay? So originally, they believed, and this is the copy of the table of uses, and the only place nowadays that this is an allowed use is in light industrial district, a heavy industrial district with a special permit. So they were told <clears throat> you need to get a special permit, but, but that doesn't, the city council doesn't have that authority to vary the use. Only you do. And so if somebody figured that out, I think it was D. Diaz and the ISD and, and Gene uh, <coughs> McManus in the uh, clerk's office, the last Tuesday night, we went to the city council to get an auto repair license in Joshua's name. And they approved it. Uh, they approved it because Councillor uh, Chikunis, who I met with, had seen how the lot had been improved and she had no objection. It's sort of isolated. The only concern the council had was no repairs or packing of vehicles on the street. If you see, it's a big corner lot. And that all work be done <clears throat> on auto repair on the property. So why are we here with you? <clears throat> because um, I think it was Clint who uh, worded the request that even though Walsh followed the gas station, and even though Walsh may have done this, they couldn't evidence that he did it within the past two years. So if we're back to if you don't exercise an approval even though it was there, it, it lapses. So you have to sort of start over, just like we did on the residential thing on the house. So we came back here because in order to go to the next step, the only people that can allow them now to have auto body is you and the fire department. So they have a spray booth, but they can't use it or erect it or construct it until they can get the use approved. And so I know it sounds kind of silly, but the city council can't approve a use variance for auto body. And since Walsh has been out of business for a period of time, which led to the building getting in its deteriorated state, uh, when they came back, so they have sort of achieved uh, most of what they wanted by getting approval for what the city council does have the authority to approve in that district is, is the auto repair transfer, in a sense, that he can conduct. It. But what's worded for you is to give your blessing to 
taking what once was a gas station, once was Walsh's 30 years auto repair, and recognizing it again and allowing him to have those uses. And that's why we're here. But he was auto repair. He wasn't auto body, was he? If you read, Clint wrote this ad before you guys came to the And I looked at the, uh, what was it, the street jacket, the cloud. And what I found is what I told you, and I got my notes here. That it started as a, it was in 1927, there weren't a lot of cars. And uh, they called it a gasoline filling station, what we now know as a service station. Uh, some people here might remember that they actually came and pumped your gas and wiped your windshield. But even though they now call them service stations, they're self-service stations. So Walsh did a variety of things from about 1970 on. But there were auto repairs and auto body work done from what Mucci found, apparently, from the time the station evolved over the years. But the last few years, I don't know that what Walsh was doing. I just know that no matter what he was doing, you have to get it in your own name, OK? And when they came in to get it in their own name, everybody wanted a, a system. But they said, you got to start at the beginning. You got to start like over. And so starting over meant he had to get approved. And it meant that uh, the city council could give him that license. The people that can allow that use is you. What use? Auto repair and auto body. Then what did the council give them? What did the council give them? They, they recognized him for auto repair because they know we had to come here to get auto body because they don't have. The city council doesn't do use variances. And there was actually a permit that was uh, filled out. I don't know if they ever got their money back, by the way. Uh, but they, they did pay a fee, remember? I think Mary knows that. They paid a fee to go to the full city council, you know, like a regular city council meeting, in which they had it. And then somebody realized yeah, that they couldn't. Uh, here it is. This was uh, the application. Um, but the city council doesn't have the power to do it for so a special if permit. If we rejected them tonight, they would still have the uh, approval to do auto repair. I don't, I don't know. know. I think not. Because I look auto repair body shop. It's only allowed in the light industry I, by I, special no, I, permit. I gave that check. I gave and the heavy industrial. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not allowed in this district. But auto repair? No. Oh. And, but city council, I thought you just said city council. No, they approved him for that use. Not the spot, just him. Excuse me? Not the spot, just him. Right. Because you can't transfer him. Let's assume that Walsh was there today and going out of business tomorrow. He still has to go and get himself approved because you have to have a quarry filled out. Uh, you have to have workman's compensation. There's a variety of things that they that go attended with the, that use <clears throat> that you need to get approved. So, so we're talking about the location here. Yeah. yeah. So he has a license, but he doesn't have a location. Yeah. I'll tell you, right in back of their building was Parker Court. And I used to bring the horses to have the horseshoes put on. And there were six horseshoes right there. Now, you couldn't start that today right there. Right? I doubt it. Yeah. We used to bring I don't know how, how much business you do. Uh, right. No, I'm saying that area had yeah. a lot of different uses. Oh, yeah. There was laundries. There was a couple of laundries. That's right. White's, laundry. whites, but there was another laundry besides whites yeah. as you went up towards Liberty. How many, how many, how many vehicles fit in the building? How many, how many cars? How many can inside? Can you repair them in the inside, inside at one time? Could um, you repair and work. I got three doors. You got three doors, a couple lifts probably. Yeah. So you could you could theoretically put three or four cars in there at one time. I can put four cars inside. Yeah. Because my my fear is you know what what it starts to look like the auto body shops they start oh. to four cars. Well, the council, when they gave them permission, yes. yeah. said that, that they, the council said that he could he could have a license, but he could not park vehicles yes, on the street or work on vehicles on the street. Excuse me. I'm just curious on how much volume the building does. Tony, Jolly, what did the council say? They said that they approved him, yeah. but they said there was only one stipulation that there be no repair work done. Uh, or vehicles parked that were being, you know, customers on the street. And so I think we provided you photographs. It's a big walk with, uh, and, and, and 
I thought we said they approved him, not a site. Right. So how are they saying you can't do it on the street? I mean, because they, site. as a condition, they put on him. They what made him say he would not there? park vehicles or repair what vehicles what on the street. What site he might end up at, that condition? You know, auto repair is, is you know, cars come in and mostly they go up the same this day. This is a better plot auto, auto body shops, those cars sit there for months sometimes. You know, and, and you know, that's why I mean, you have to see the size of the lot. They were prison. They they are tenants. I think I provided yeah, the lease. Yeah, but to this school would be. Oh yeah, but Pat, I, I could certainly talk to Pat. I mean, yeah. because I think I no, provided no, no, no. you with the lease and with the conditions that he yeah. had. Yes, often up the area, make it make yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, they, they have made a tremendous improvement from what, believe me. Oh, what was it, it. believe me, it is. I know it. I remember that from years ago. It's tough to soften up an auto repair body shop. I tell you. Well, do the best you can. Well, no, no, no. I think I could talk. They, I'm just saying they don't own the yeah. building. I right. could talk to Pat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that Pat Pat understood that he said to them, he entered into the agreement with them in December. But he said, I can't get you. I can't get that permit. You you have to get the permit. So he sent them along that line. They started out on their own. Then they came, and people here at City Hall and the building department and the city clerk's office tried to help them. And then at one point they got sort of off track thinking that they could go get a special permit and that's when they filled this out. And then somebody realized that... I mean, I'd almost like to see some sort of bar barrier between the, the road and the, and the property because my fear is, as you know, more and more cars are just going to spill in down there and it's gonna, you're going to get that on the sidewalk, on the street park and there's going to be no way for anybody to walk. So what, what would you like to see? I, I, I'm not really sure but you know my brother's table is right next door so there's a lot of foot traffic down there and if they start to make it so that it's unpassable around those corners you know you mean like fencing or something, something yeah because if i'm not mistaken and i haven't been you know that, that's this lot for it for any reason but there's really no delineation between lot sidewalk and street oh, yeah, it just all in, yeah, all melts in. together so right. yeah. that's where my fear is there becomes there's no foot traffic path now oh, anymore because uh, attend to that. Well, I'd say this, that he obviously wanted to rent a place to these guys. He made them go get the permits, and if I, I report to him that one of the requirements is that as nice as the building now looks, we've got to do something else. Even a four foot chain like yeah. this, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what the solution is, but just something yeah. that well, I was, you gives know, some, that, that, gives some, or even idea. just wallets, you know, you know, that, yeah, something that that says okay, this is. Delin I think you want a delineation, as, as I understand it. You want a delineation and something that impedes people from just driving or walking through. Right, right. I want yeah, really. I, got, I have to say it. Uh, it you know, these, these individuals are obviously want to start a business. I, I, I can I can appreciate that, but this goes against everything the city has been trying to do with with with, with the central business district and. Uh, the, the downtown marketing plan, the working on the Brownfield site next door, mm -hmm. uh, the Hawthorne site, Mr. Cadell working, trying to redevelop that. And I just don't think this, this is a compatible use with, 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 with what the city's been trying to promote down there. It's the use. To take the non-compatible uses out of there when you have a chance to take them out yeah, but without hurting anybody. Yeah, but it's the use that's been there. It's the use that's I, that, been that's, there. I know, but no, Sam, things change. The, uh, last July, the city expanded their cultural district to include High Rock Tower, and now this is inside the downtown cultural district. I don't think that that's what the city is, mm -hmm. is attempting to do, is to put an auto body and auto repair shop in this, in this area. I just, I think it goes against everything I've been reading in the newspapers for the last 10 years. Well, Councilor Chakud has had no objection. I have no, I don't see a letter. Well, no then I'd be glad that. to talk to her and tell her you want to work. But I mean, we wouldn't have gotten approval for, by the city council for our repair if she wasn't for it. 
What people way? came to the conclusion is, if it's been this way for all these years, and that's the use that it's had, okay? There's always the, around the next, over the next hill or the next horizon, there might be some better use, but there could be some. You never less get over use. the hill if you keep doing what you've been doing, you know? Uh, I just want to add to that, Mr. Cole's thoughts. That we wish you guys well. I mean, I personally do. I think it's great that you want to start yep. a business, but just that neighborhood, it just, I can't see it personally. Um, it's, it's against the vision of downtown, and, and so... Well, the White I, I Laundry support. site is a contaminated site that right. flows into the parking lot next to the Hawthorne. Well, Nothing's right. happened in that well, site. Well, something will happen. The post, well, the post office is going to build an, an addition. They didn't, okay? Mm -hmm. That site's been there because it's a contaminated There's site. A lot of problems out With there. formaldehyde. Yeah. And then, with respect uh, to the Hawthorne, it sits there because people yeah. pay the taxes, do whatever, but... He's a big key pin, key, you know. But, but on this end of, of, of the street, this, this what the, what's happened here is much improved. It's much improved, mm -hmm. and it's, it's consistent with what prior uses have been since, uh, I told you, since 1927, when the Board of Appeals allowed a gas station. I don't know what the zoning in that area was in 1927, but I, I know they went to the Board of Appeals to get a full. And I know that when uh, the building department looked at it and when the, uh, the city clerk's office looked at it, they advised these people what approvals they should get. Uh, and, they, and all of those sites, that's the other part of this, that because of White's Laundry using formaldehyde, all of the sites on that side of the street, all of that land, is subject to a... Uh, uh, activity use limitation. It's not like you can go put residences there because of the, uh, the contamination that resulted from the formaldehyde that flowed out of the dry cleaning business into that lot and, and the groundwater supply underneath. So that there was, uh, when, when Mia Clancy was here, the DEP filed an order and right. a company called uh, Lighting uh, uh, consultants went in and did the study on the, uh, so there's a limited usage for this site. You, you can't put a residence there, you can't put a school there. They have what's called an AUL, activity use limitation. So the kinds of things that can go there are things that are above grade, don't disturb the pavement, uh, and uh, you know, th maybe in theory there's some better use or somebody's gonna come along, but you saw what happened when Walsh left to the property, and so now somebody's come along, made an investment, improved it and wants to utilize it. So if you have an objection as to auto body, that's one thing. If you have an objection to auto repair, that's, that's a use that, again, they say has been there. Uh, I didn't word this uh, application. The, the building department did. And it says, where such non-conforming use previously existed but was discontinued. And so uh, I've got Walsh's business certificate, which is still valid, okay, which he renewed, all right, and I think that's what, he was in business, he could be in business in that site till March of 2019. So that was the question about whether the use was or wasn't discontinued. And I think they came down and said, well, the better way is you get approved for it and then go get approval uh, to reinstate the use that was there. And that's what they did. You, know, this, you bring up an, an interesting point because, and you're familiar somewhat with, with the liquor laws, and you can't necessarily pocket a liquor license. Is that correct? You have a period of a time. Period of time. Right. So, so the, the people talk. The people use well, the what word. I, my abandoned. only my only point is that as the city looks at changing the zoning, they ought to look at some something that so somebody can go in for ten or fifteen years and just pay the fee. The thing's been vacant, it hasn't been taken the, the, care of, the, it's, yeah, been a, it's been it, a it nice the problem. You're right. The problem is that people are using two words interchangeably. They're using abandoned, a use is abandoned. So you've seen, you know in the house, you've seen abandoned properties where people don't pay the taxes, don't pay the water bill, don't pay the mortgage, and they just leave, okay? And, and, the, and the city people go, well, why can't they do something? It's, it's because they, there are laws that say you can come back in three years, reclaim the property, do whatever. Okay, but the, the ordinance uses, and there's a distinction between uh, in time, okay? And so typically, a use is abandoned if, if it hasn't been carried out for more than two years, okay? From, from the time somebody stops doing something, uh, 
it's probably discontinued if it's in that two year period. After that, it may have been abandoned. So this wasn't an abandoned use. It might have been discontinued by what? There was no use in there, yeah. Right. But, but it yeah. was certainly the use that was the... No, I'm just saying it's something that you look at. Like a, something burns down by state law, you got a year to rebuild. After that, you you got to come back in for something new. But no, I'm just saying it could have it could have uh, possibly got some action on that. So, uh, but let, let me just suggest this to you. I think that um, because they went through the process and because they got approved for auto repair, and that because I think all the evidence is that it was clearly used for auto repair, um, and there's a question as to whether it was abandoned or discontinued. And that's why I went up Walsh's business certificate, um, that at a minimum, they ought to be able to get uh, and return to do auto repair. Because I don't know what other use could be made of this property given the fact of the, as you pointed out, the White's Laundry, and this what's called an AUL, activity use limitation. It's not like you could put any kind of use there. There, there are uses that are prohibited. And one of the things that prohibited is you can't dig up the ground. You could, it could be a parking lot. That's a permitted use. It could be a parking lot because it's paved. But then it's just going to be an impervious, empty, you know, lot. Um, and there are certain uses that could be there, but it's not going to be uh, one that would generate uh, either jobs, uh, commercial tax rates. Uh, and so I think they moved the ball forward pretty much, and they're just trying to do what everybody in City Hall told them to do. As I say, they got this far without me. They got this far on their own, okay? I just came in on last Tuesday night, and when I, uh, people in the building department and the, uh, in the clerk's office said, we don't know which way to go. I then uh, talked with Hector, who then translated to me, and then I met with Councilor Chakoudis, and then I went before the license committee to get him approved to do auto repair. But I understood, and I told him from day one, that uh, you can't sell cars there, you can't uh, do body work there. Only, the only people that can give use variances, and so, and so other uses that are not allowed, I mean, I remember when Bob Breast Buick was downtown, and uh, I can't remember, was it Whitney? Oh, there were other auto, <coughs> automobile dealers in the downtown area. They're not there anymore. And they can't go back. They can't go on the landway because they've changed the zoning. But that doesn't change the reality of what you see there in terms of every day. So this, to me, in terms of uh, creating a burden, there's a big difference in terms of a, a, a business. Their hours are like, uh, you know, uh, Monday through Saturday, six to whatever, okay? If somebody were to build an apartment there, it's 24-7. But I, you can't build an apartment there. So when you get into the ones you can't build, then it's not like you got all this array of choices that you can build. And so essentially, if you want to allow them, and I'd be glad to go talk and have Doug Council to send a letter, because these, these were the discussions we had before we went to the city council, because we wanted to be certain that the city council, uh, if they understood what it was, what they were approving, and as I say, the one concern they had was still with <coughs> Echo Deer about no, nothing in the street, no vehicles parked on the street, no work done on the vehicles in the street. But uh, as far as the use for auto repair, that was approved. It was approved March 27th. Who fixed no. up the building? Excuse me? Who fixed up the building? Pat Tedisco. He bought the building from Walsh. And then he leased it to these guys. And he's a well-known builder. Excuse me? He's a well-known builder, Tedisco. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's the one. He's actually in the towing business, believe it or not, on TV. Yeah, he built the house there. Yeah. The cement Spring house. Road. Yeah. He owns yeah. lots of property. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in all in all, in all fairness, I mean, he uh, he painted it and did a little work, but you know, that's not like the building that we saw going in your client on Western Avenue. I mean, let's be honest about the situation. Yeah. No. Sir. So I'd be glad to ask him about. I think. I don't pretend to say I know how to, I, I think I understand what Mr. Gisono wants, but I think you could do it by those uh, metal wallets to separate and uh, stop drive through traffic. I mean, take a look at the uh, Patriot Properties picture of what this building looked like when Patriot Properties were in there. Now you're talking about Jersey Barry. Yeah, but, but I think what he wanted something that would blend. And while it would demarcate the lines, it wouldn't be overpowering or burdensome. 
but it would prevent either drive through traffic or well, you'd know where the sidewalk ended and the building began. Uh, but I was sort of amazed here. I mean, here, this is, to get an idea, this is what Walsh's looked like. I know. This is what it looked like. It's the nature of the business. We're trying to summer in the commercial. Mm -hmm. oh, there must be 25 cars and trucks all on that part of the car. And it's a summer you can't even imagine living around. There was a case on the corner of Ford uh, Street and Stetson, I think. It used to be, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was a mattress factory or something, but it was abandoned for years. And it, it went to court, and the judge said, as long as they pay the taxes on the property, it never loses its distinction, whatever it was. And, and that's, in those cases, uh, turn on this definition of what's an abandonment versus discontinuance. So Mr. Cole's point is, I think that the ordinance, okay, uses the right term. It says, because what you say is so, it's not abandoning. If I were to leave the country and send my rent check or my tax check or pay my water bill, one could argue I didn't abandon it. But I might well have discontinued. Yeah, discontinued, is a, that's what right. it so, so I think that the ordinance, and that's why I think Mr. Mucci did what he did in the wording about that it was, since it was unclear, he said it was discontinued. Right. Okay, because they may well have paid the taxes, they may well have paid the water bill, they may have done those things, but the use was discontinued. And I think example on the Collins Street, once they took the house down in 1979, they might have been able to come back, but when that passage of time comes around, they can't come back without reestablishing a use. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing about the business district and the central business district. Permit the use. Yeah, I just I'm just telling you how this evolved, okay? Right. And and I and I, I I I think they would be the first to tell you that the people that they dealt with at City Hall went out of the way to help. Them, yeah, okay? right. I'm in favor of myself. Uh, and, and try to direct them in the in the right way. And that when I when I got to it, I wanted to make certain if they were going to do it in the right way, that they went to the right, right. body like to get the permissions that were required. All right. All right. Thank you. Anyone else here in favor of this petition? I'll ask you everyone. Uh, I close the air. Those in favor, those opposed. Those opposed. If I'm not, close the air. Those opposed. What is the wish to vote? I'd like to make a motion to continue. I'd like to get some feedback from the city council on what their thoughts were, number one, and I'd also like to see some work done by these guys on what we can do to delineate between the business and the Pedestrians, you know, how can we how can we fix the lot up so that there's actually a sidewalk and a walkable surface there for a handicap or a, you know, because the, the food shelf is there, a lot of them are in wheelchairs and, and walking and things like that. So I'd like to yeah, right. at least see that. So thank you. Is there a second? All right, second. Uh, please call the roll. Yes, continue. Yes, to continue. Mr. Cole? No. Yes, it continues. The petition will be continued to, what is it, direction? April 17th. Thank you. I have to explain. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, do we have any business? Yeah, there's all business still on. Oh, yeah, Windsor Ave. Any, any correspondence on that one? Um, she wrote to me today, and she said she wanted to know what your plans were to do, and I told her today. She never wrote back to me. They've got to be close on time, aren't they? It is an ad. It, it, it's on, she wants a new 100 days, I think. Isn't that it? No, she's got a 100 days. Oh, she got a 100 days. So she, she still has a little time. Oh, she does. She a little time. Yeah, we yeah, should send her a... It's been three months, right? Yeah, but I have a sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. She either should withdraw our presence right. or wait until yeah. later. Uh, I guess maybe that, that's a good point. Um, 
if she's not prepared at the next meeting. No, she's not prepared. Maybe now. we'll make it a little let, letter withdrawal without prejudice. Next meeting, meeting. yeah. Well, well, what happens if so? The deck's already built, correct? It might. Correct. It's partially. I guess they start there or something. So they're, they're halfway through. She wants to make an extension. Oh, and, and this thing was already there on the house, right? Yeah. When they bought it, yeah. they bought it. You know, people you know, need a deck, so you hate to see it. Yeah, no, I hate to just to yeah. butt them off, but they got to they got to step yeah. up. And, so why can't they all to the deck that's there and make it conform? I don't. Yeah. I let's, don't know the answer. That let's give up. Let's because. give them one more chance. Can we do that? Sure. Yeah. They're a young couple. I hate to see them at the tear it down. Does someone want to make that as a motion? I'll do it, sure. And a second? Second. Okay. Motion by, by, by Mr. G. Tell them there, though. They're not there on the 17th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please call them. Mr. Wood. Yes, to continue. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chisano. Yes, to continue. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Cole. No. Mr. Cole. Yes, to continue. Okay, motion to adjourn. Uh, yeah. Sorry. All in favor? Yes. <laughs>